Good evening, everyone. Uh, Andrew Morrison, Chairman of New Zealand Meat Board, and I'd just like to welcome you to the New Zealand Meat Board Annual Meeting 2022. This meeting reports on the 2020-2021 financial year. This is the second year we've run a virtual New Zealand Meat Board Annual Meeting, and we've done that for two reasons. Uh, you'll be all be well aware of the uh, COVID situation that we're currently going through. But uh, the second reason we wanted to do this because it actually opens it up for access with technology on farm for a whole bunch more of our farming community to attend the meeting. So I uh, just want to thank all the farmers and different the, the financiers, et cetera, and, and ministries who have joined us here tonight. And we've enabled that through running it digitally. Just want to note that this meeting is being recorded. If you do have any technology issues or connectivity issues, um, it is being recorded and you'll be able to view it at a later stage on our website. Um, I just can confirm at this stage that we do have a quorum of farmers who have either voted online or, or who have registered and are on the call today. Before I go to the next slide, I just want to welcome you all here. Um, I want to acknowledge that the guests here tonight, I'd like to acknowledge our board who was all on the call. Um, we've got Sam McIver, our CEO with us. We have Cross Spooner, our financial officer, and we have Nick Beebe with us, our GM of Quota and Information. So you'll get to interact with them through the question and answer session later. Just want to just call out that they're all on the, on the call list tonight. Next slide, please. The agenda tonight is quite standard. There we go. We've got the welcome. We've got the chairman's report followed by the chief executive's address. After that, we will take questions. Then we have resolutions one, director's fee resolution two, the appointment of the auditors. Then we will speak around the consultation of the industry good funding. Finally, we'll open up for general business and we'll talk about the date for the next New Zealand Meat Board annual meeting. After that, we have a pre-recorded session with um, Vangelis Vitalis, MFAT Deputy Secretary of Trade and Economics, and he's going to give a pre-recorded, he's off doing uh, stuff globally currently, so couldn't join us, but has recorded that and we'll take questions at the end of that. The uh, subject that is New Zealand trade policy in the new world disorder. Then what are is, is, is priorities and challenges is the way that Vangelis is going to present that. But can I uh, confirm that we have no apologies that have been put forward? If there's any apologies from the floor, uh, could you just please post them in the chat and we can record those in our minutes for the next, uh, as we record the minutes for the next year. For the minutes, I'd just like to confirm the minutes from the 2021 annual meeting were held online, which was held online 12th of March, 2021. It was accepted as a true and accurate record of the meeting held by the New Zealand Meat Board at its April, 2021 meeting. And those have been signed off. These minutes were included in the New Zealand Meat Board notice of meeting with reference to the new, reference to the New Zealand Meat Board website. Today for the meeting, the procedures, the board has determined that under section 30, uh, sorry, 58-3 of the Meat Board Act 2004, that the voting entitlement be on the same basis as the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Constitution, which is one farmer, one vote for ordinary resolutions. Voting has all been has been conducted online and closes at 8 p.m. today following this meeting. We will advise of the results next week. We will, however, have time to discuss each resolution later in the meeting. Can I have a new slide, please? Vision statement. Our vision is New Zealand farmer and industry prosperity through safeguarding and realising the value of quota market and reserves. Next slide, please. One thing I'd just like to call out at this stage is I'm very proud to announce that uh, to this year is the 100 years of the New Zealand Meat Board. Quite a milestone, 100 years ago since the first Meat Board meeting occurred or convened on March 19, 2022, following the passing of the Meat Board Export Control Act 1921 22 So quite a momentous year. It's also 140 years since the first shipment of meat left in the, on the Dunedin bound for the UK. So it's quite a momentous year. What we've done to celebrate this is we've commissioned a book called Meeting Change, and that will be launched later uh, in the year. And there'll be a chance to, uh, it basically records the significant industry progress in the last 25 years. 
prior to that, in the different you know, the different twenty five year periods, there's been two previous books called one the Golden Jubilee, and the second one the Meat Axe, which have been previously published, and this just updates the story of that hundred year journey. So very proud to announce that, and we will be holding functions with some of our trading partners in the UK and Brussels later in the season. This is quite a uh, significant achievement, and very proud to be here uh, announcing that today. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, just to give our report, basically, I just want to clarify that the New, Ze New Zealand Meat Board has two core functions, quota management and the management of the New Zealand Meat Board Farmer Reserves. With the withdrawal of the UK from the EU effective 31 December 2020, two new quotas are now administered by the New Zealand Meat Board. These are the UK sheep meat and goat meat quota and the UK high quality beef quota. Existing administration of the EU sheep meat and goat meat quota and the EU high quality beef quota remain, as does the United States beef and veal quota. Just to give some context around this, the value of quota administration onshore is significant for New Zealand. Your New Zealand Meat Board administers quotas to the value of $2.3 billion of red meat exports sorry, $2.3 billion of red meat exports to the EU, UK and US. These quota markets and these deliver a tariff quota saving of $839 million per export year. That's made up of New Zealand dollars, $499 million for EU and UK sheep meat and goat meat tariff savings and $340 million for US beef and veal tariff savings. So that's the quota administration. Our second function is the responsibility for the 82 million of farmer reserves. The origins of this fund trace back to the meat pool account and the meat industry stabilization account and the marketing by New Zealand government of the day of meat produce from New Zealand primarily for the United Kingdom during the Second World War. In 1950, by arrangement between federated farmers and government of the day and validated by New Zealand legislation, the meat industry reserve account was set up and was we currently manage the, the administration of these funds. It's always good to call that out because sometimes this is confusion around where these funds were created, around levies over the years, but this was, as I say, a payment from the UK government into that meat industry stabilisation account. That 82 million of reserves comprised of $61 million of contingency fund, which includes 2.6 million of quota market contingencies and a 21 million of general reserves. These um, reserves provide funding to assist in major industry crisis to reopen export markets. That's what the 61 million is for. They maintain a prudent level of net assets to avoid jeopardizing quota markets and the integrity of quota management systems. That's what the 2.6 million is for. And then the, the income or the interest from that managed balanced fund provides uh, funding for industry good activity of which we'll speak about later. Next uh, slide, please. If we were summing up this year, it's been a year of fluidity and resilience. You'll be well aware that New Zealand trade has been resilient in the face of the UK export exit from the EU. The UK and EU proceeded with their plan to split the quotas between the, new, between the two markets. Negotiations around that quota split with both the UK and the EU27 are still ongoing. And we anticipate that nominally greater share than the originally proposed quota split will be allocated to the EU27 to reflect the market access outcomes of the New Zealand UK FDA. So look, we're working very closely with the New Zealand government to ensure negotiation outcomes are implemented alongside the recently signed UK FDA. Just want to point out that it's critically important that we keep quota administration in New Zealand. It maintains the quality of that quota access and it gives certainty to our companies in export planning. I can't stress that enough. The ability to administer the quota offshore for the value of our sector is, is significant. You'll be well aware that the New Zealand UK government signed the free trade agreement on the 28th of February 2022, resulting in the opportunities for New Zealand red meat trade into the UK during the transition period 
and tariff eliminations over 15 years. The FTA requires ratification by respective governments and is hoped this can be concluded for entry into force 1st of January 2023. The highlights of this are the beef access, which commences at 12,000 tonnes per year entry into force, increasing to 38,830 tonnes in year 10 and 60,000 tonnes by year 15 with safeguards for year 11 to 15. Just to put that in context, our current access into the UK after the quota splits is 454 tonne. 454 tonne versus 12,000 tonnes is a significant opportunity for New Zealand red meat producers of high quality beef into that UK market. The UK will remove duties on beef after 10 years, but a product specific safeguard mechanism will be applied for an additional five years. Sheep meat access will also be fully liberated after 15 years, duty free with additional transition quotas of 35 tons in year 30, sorry, 35,000 tons in year one to four and 50,000 tons in year five to 15. And sheep meat FDA volumes will be accessible once 90% of the existing WTO quota has been used. Finally, the UK will fully liberalise access for sheep meat after 15 years. I just want to call out here, New Zealand Meat Board has been partnered with SHIP with Beef and Lamb New Zealand Meat Industry Association and played a role in negotiation. And I would really like to acknowledge MFAT staff and MPI staff online tonight for the significant role that they've played. Look, we've got, you know, I want to call out Brad Burgess. Mangalis is going to speak to us later. We really are thankful of the partnership and the outcome and what this has delivered for the red meat sector of New Zealand. So thank you very much. I'd also like to call out the minister. He's done a sterling job traveling up there in the face of COVID. He's had about three trips offshore to uh, negotiate this and then sign this, as I say, on the 28th of February. So thank you very much, minister. That concludes my report and I'll be handing over to Chief Executive Sam McIver for his report. And then we will take questions at the completion of both our reports. Sam. Thank you, Andrew. Could I have the next slide, please? Tēnā koutou katoa. It's um, great to see you all joining us uh, this evening. Um, as we reflect on the year, there are several aspects that I want to draw some more attention to. The statement of intent on page three and four of our annual report, if you've been fortunate enough to read that, sets out the key deliverables uh, for the last year. And I'm pleased to say that the nine green traffic lights show excellent performance against the plan. I'm pleased to also say that the ambers are either completed post-reporting or are in hand. I'll now step through some of the highlights of quota and reserves management. But before I do that, just let me expand on the financial result for the year outlined by the chairman. Next slide, please. The board reported a surplus of 5.8 million from reserves and quota management. Quota management activities recorded a deficit of 331,000, and we continue to aim for a break even position over the medium term, as this function is funded by quota holders and applicants. As anticipated, quota management reserves have been drawn upon as the New Zealand Meat Board has worked through Brexit issues over the last few years. A surplus of 6.1 million was reported from reserves management, which includes investment gains of 5.9 million. The investment reserve fund uh, returned 10.2% after fees and taxes, and this compares very favourably with the 2.9% uh, in the 2020 year. After fees, tax and inflation, the actual return on investment was 5.3%, and this expen extends sorry, this exceeds our medium term target of 3.3%. The annual CPI movement to 30th of September uh, 2021 was 4.9%. As the chairman noted, the New Zealand Meat Board balance uh, sheet is strong with net assets of 82.2 million. Next slide, please. From a quota management perspective, there are two key business improvement reviews that were completed during the year. First, a quota allocation mechanism review, and secondly, a quota compliance statutory audit. 
Section 29.2 of the Act requires the New Zealand Meat Board to review its quota allocation mechanisms at least every five years. And it's essentially a two-step uh, process. Firstly, ensuring that the allocation mechanisms are consistent with a minimum set of requirements. And secondly, with the board's objects. The 2020 review, which included extensive consultation and analysis, concluded in February 2021. And uh, the conclusion was agreement to retain the existing mechanisms. However, the board anticipates that a further review may be needed in the next two to three years, depending on the outcomes from finalisation of FTA negotiations with the UK and with the EU. Next slide, please. Uh, the New Zealand uh, Meat Board Quota Management Systems are subject to statutory audits on a three yearly basis to ensure compliance with the Crown's international treaty obligations. The Ministry of Primary Industries audit team undertook this audit, and the findings were that the New Zealand Meat Board is achieving substantial compliance with the Meat Board Act. However, as any good audit does, opportunities were identified for improvement, and management sub subsequently completed a work program in December 2021 to put in place several recommendations. The key outcome was reviewing our quota compliance verification program. And this was done in consultation with the industry. The improvements being implemented for the new season uh, will commence in October 2022. And these improvements focus on three key areas. Better consistency across different quotas, internal verification procedures, and provisions for new quota ver verification in the future, especially as we see changes with FTAs. Next slide, please. One of the objectives of Meat Board uh, Reserves Investment is the generation of funds to support industry good investments. Funding of $1 million was granted to Beef and Lamb New Zealand Genetics Research and uptake in the year ended September 2021. And indeed has been recommended by the board for the 2022 year. The key focus for the coming year is a transition and in investment from sheep genetics infrastructure to support an MPI partnered informing New Zealand beef program. This program will draw on Beef and Lamb New Zealand's world-class sheep genetics program and apply these tools and principles and disciplines to our beef industry. There are five key program objectives. Firstly, uh, new national breeding objectives for the beef herd. Secondly, standardized trait measurements. Thirdly, the application of genomics to commercial herds. Fourthly, uh, genetic evaluation and data management. And fifthly, and very importantly, uh, industry supporting industry uptake of those genetics tools. We expect this program to deliver an extra $460 million in industry profit over the next 25 years. And we believe that's absolutely realistic given what's been achieved in the sheep industry to date. Next slide, please. A mindset and commitment to continuous improvement characterizes our meat board operations. During the year, COVID was again a potential disruptor, but the board performed admirably regardless. We were prepared. We had the ability to work remotely both in Brussels and in New Zealand. Uh, we were deemed uh, an essential service and we're very thankful to the Ministry of Primary Industries for their work there. And we also put in place an intensive program of staff support uh, resourcing and resilience tools. However, I have to say that COVID didn't prevent us from focusing on improvement. Aside from those noted in the audits, there were four other areas of focus uh, in the last year and looking forward to the future too. We're embarking on a project uh, with US authorities to remove paper-based certification. This will save time, reduce costs, simplifies processes, and reduce errors. Obviously, application of this to the UK and EU would be a desirable uh, step to follow. Farmer communication and engagement has been a major focus. We have upped specialised communication around quota and reserves uh, management to farmers, and this online AGM provides another opportunity to increase that access. We conducted a review of the cost of 
operate in the New Zealand Meat Board to ensure that fees are sufficient and meat board, uh, sorry, meat uh, board uh, requirements, including uh, continuous improvement and uh, new technologies. The consultation for this cost review concluded in September 2021. Lastly, we're focused on the proposed 1st of January 2023 implementation of the new UK FTA and ensuring that is seamless for our exporters and their customers. In closing, the, the Meat Board has once again provided world-class service to our industry and provided a very competent custodian role for industry reserves. I want to acknowledge the outstanding work by my staff and what has been one of the most testing years in the Meat Board's history. They've come through with flying colours and the value to New Zealand and the industry of the Meat Board managing quotas has once more been underlined. For you, our farmers, our exporting partners and other stakeholders, we thank you for your continued support. We look forward to capturing more value for you in 2022. That concludes my report and I'll now hand over to the Chairman and we'll take questions. Thank you, Sam, for doing that. Now, um, it's always slightly challenging um, to take digital questions, Nick. Are you, are you collecting questions and or people can post them online for them to be asked, is that correct? Yep, that's correct, Andrew. And um, just a reminder that the um, floor is open for questions. Um, and if you have some, um, please, type them into the, the chat bar um, as we go. At the moment, we, we don't have any questions um, on the, the chairs or the CEO's report, so we can keep on going. But um, if questions, if people have um, questions to ask, we can always come back to them later on uh, during the session. So I'll hand back to you, Andrew. Yeah, thanks, Nick, because we're going to do resolutions now and there will be an opportunity for general business if people wanted to um, get, if they had any business they needed to bring up to be sort of starting to type that up now and or questions after Van Gaali's presentation. So there's another couple of sections we can ask questions in if people want to type that into the chat bar. Okay, we'll move on to the functional business end of the AGM and we have two resolutions to put up and then an explanation around industry good funding application. So the first resolution, as you can see on your slide there, is shown as a proposed increase from 144,200 to 147,500 for the director's fee pool. This has been proposed to the farmers to the notice of the annual general meeting and voting on the resolution closes at 8 p.m. today following the close of this meeting. But we can either vote online, but plus keen for any questions or feedback on this too in this format. The 2021 fee increase proposal uh, was not supported. That was back in 2021, you'll remember. And what we are proposing here is an increase based upon the June 2021 CPI movement of 3%. The fee proposed is consistent with the remuneration movements across the sector based on bench, uh, a benchmarking exercise that was undertaken. Farmers have the ultimate say by accepting or rejecting this. And so um, that is open for discussion now if there's any questions from the floor. Um, Andrew, there's uh, no questions have been received uh, at this stage. Okay. Um, as I say, the voting actually online closes at 8 p.m. tonight. So you have the option um, still to contribute into that process there if you haven't already done so. Okay, if there's no questions, can we move, or move on to resolution number two? Resolution number two is the, um, I've lost my slides, is the appointment um, of KPMG to be appointed as the New Zealand Meat Board Auditor for the year ending 30th September 2022. The tender through this year we did a RFP or a tender process. We went to market and uh, considered con competing proposals. Basically, what we found through that process is that KPMG continues to be the most competitive audit service offered for our needs. And so we as a board are happy to put this proposal towards uh, for farmers to vote on. Once again, open for discussion, which could be slightly challenged digitally.
Hi, Andrew. Uh, looks like you're having a, a fairly easy night because there's um, still no, no questions on this resolution. Okay, I do want to stress that we, uh, we, we, we did go through this RFP process because it had been a number of years since we had done that. Um, through using a consistent company, you do go through the process of partner rotation. Um, Cross, if you want to confirm just the partner rotation tenure, just for, for continuity. Yeah, so a seven-year a seven rotation. And in between those rotations, the audit manager will change as well and be rotated out. Cool. So I just wanted to confirm that to give some degree of comfort that around um, the, the, the continuity of service supplied, but also the degree of um, we don't get wedded to one audit partner. And so there's a new set of eyes looks over and audits, audits quite diligently. Okay, if there's no questions on that, can I then move to the next slide of industry good funding? Once again, um, we are seeking feedback on the proposed proposal. This is a proposal. The New Zealand Meat Board has um, supported this at a board level, but this has to come out for consultation with their farmer, farmer constituents. So the proposal is to fund up to $1 million dollars of from interest for the 2021 2022 uh, year this is from investment income from the industry good funding and this is for the informing new zealand beef program which you'll be aware of there's been a media release and hopefully you've seen it online is an approved um, mpi s triple f funding contract for seven years and the contract is now in place so we're proud to announce that um, when we come out for consultation, this is genuine consultation once again, and if farmers see not to fit to uh, support this, of course, Beef and Lamb New Zealand will be supplying the funding, hence the reason we can commit and hand sign up to this program. As Sam said, in the Informing New Zealand Beef Program, we'll focus on the five areas of the new national breeding objectives, standardising the trait measurements, commercial herd genomics, genetic evaluation and data management, and finally, the industry uptake and extension. So this consultation has been live online and we have had some digital feedback. So just wanted to talk to this tonight, see if there was any questions on this and or people can continue to give feedback until 8 p.m. tonight. been very proud as a sheep and beef farmer and I make quite a, a sustainable statement there's no set that should, can match the productivity gains of the sheep and sea, beef sector bar none in New Zealand since the economic reform of the 80s and this has been heavily influenced by investment in genetics farm systems and the farmer uptake of this technology hence the reason the New Zealand Meat Board and Beef and Lamb very proud to support this investment in the informing New Zealand beef program. New Zealand sheep uh, sector has demonstrated the massive improvement values and they only wanted to replicate that across the beef sector. Okay if there's no questions there can we head on to general business? Is there any general businesses from the floor? No, Andrew. Okay, at this stage I would, if there's none, I would like to take the time to make some uh, acknowledgements. First acknowledgement is I, I bring with a heavy heart the loss of Tim Ritchie uh, this year. Um, Tim, you will all know, has been a great contributor to the meat sector over the years. Um, Tim was a, a great personal mentor to me in his role of CEO at the Meat Industry Association. And I sat on the industry good organisation of Obis Management with Tim. So as a young, well, not so young man, but a young and experienced man coming in, Tim was great. And I, I, as I say, it's with a heavy heart, we recognise the passing of Tim this past year. 
I'd also like to just call out Tony Egan. Tony's retiring after this meeting. Tony has contributed three years service to Beef and Lamb New Zealand and the New Zealand Meat Board. And I just want to recognise that contribution, Tony. Thank you very much for your time and your wise counsel for the past three years and wanted to just make sure that is recorded. You've been a, you've been a, a stalwart mate and it's been much appreciated. I'd like to acknowledge two new directors onto our board, Kate Eckland, who was voted on as a new farmer director for the Northern South Island, effectively March 2021. Welcome, Kate. I'd also like to welcome and acknowledge Alex Gillio, who was appointed as the processor or the MIA Industry Processor Director to Beef and Lamb and the New Zealand Meat Board in July 2021. You'll all be aware that on uh, Beef and Lamb and New Zealand Meat Board, MIA has two nominee or appointments on there. And Alex is effectively an independent position that comes near and helps broaden the skill set via MIA, MIA that comes on to New Zealand Meat Board and Beef and Lamb. I'd also like to acknowledge, the, you know, as I said in my report, the huge and significant contribution that Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Primary Industries in signing these free trade agreements and negotiating the next ones for us. As I say, Brad Burgess up there in Ireland, who did a wonderful job in negotiating UK FTA, FTA. the minister himself for travelling up there and all the staff, Please take care, our uh, much heartfelt and respected thanks for the work that you contribute and really and do, and do enjoy the partnerships that we've developed over the years. So thank you. Also want to acknowledge Dave Harrison. Dave is standing down as the GM of Quote and Information in September 2021. He stood down after four years. He's got a reasonably busy life doing a bunch of other stuff with some new roles. So I just want to acknowledge your contribution, Dave, and thank you very much. And then taking Dave's role is Nick Beebe. Nick will be the new GM of Quota Administration, Quota and Information. So welcome, Nick, and thank you very much. Also, as Sam said in his report, I do want to call out and acknowledge all the staff, both onshore and offshore. Um, Sam mentioned it's been a kind of a challenging couple of years with this COVID thing going on and the fact we're essential services and staff had to reprovision both in New Zealand and overseas to meet uh, requirements to keep themselves safe while still delivering and supporting that e quota export trade. So thank you very much staff and really do appreciate it. Finally, I just would like to say the New Zealand next annual meeting will be proposed will be in March, 2023. Um, please join us there.